away. So you're in. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, wonderful. I want to make sure that I'm hooked up to the right internet. Sometimes back here, our wireless gets kind of spotty. Oh, yeah. Well, you're not alone. Okay, I think I'm on the right one now. Okay. I always have to, my mom, every time she watch, watches one of these, she says that I need to sit up. <laughs> Good advice for mom. Yeah. But a lot of times I feel like I have to be, you know, like I'm not in the, in the, um, the shot of the camera. So let me see. Here. So I'll let you know when we go live. Oh, okay. Um, it'll probably even show it up here somewhere um, that we are live whenever it, whenever um, up in the corner when it happens. But we'll wait till like five to eleven before I go in to do it. So. Um, I don't want to talk too much because I don't want to, a lot of it is better when it happens on as part of the program. Oh, really? <laughs> well, I hope you got some questions because I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Yes, I've got questions. Okay. And it'll probably just, the conversation will probably just flow naturally once I ask some of the questions. And if you think of something that you'd like to add, go for it. If I don't ask a question that you think people should hear, won't hurt my feelings to bring it up. So looks like you have a collection back there. Oh, those are tiny dogs. Oh. Yeah. Whenever I go to an antique store or, you know, that's what I look for. Neat. Do you have a Sometimes dog? I hmm? Do I have a dog? No. Yeah. I got four cats. Oh. <laughs> I just started collecting them years ago and it just kept on. And now my kids give them to me as gifts, you know, mom, we found this little tiny dog. Okay. That's so neat. Oh, and there's more over there too. Oh, okay. A while back, my mom used to collect Santa Clauses. Oh uh, yeah. For Christmas. And every year we would give her a Santa Claus and she had a special place and you know, she would display all the Santa Clauses and she had big Santa Clauses and little Santa Clauses and some of them played music and some of them didn't. And it was really neat. But then one day she finally said, I have enough Santa Clauses. Exactly. And so we, we stopped giving them to her. And now that they've moved, they don't, she doesn't have as much space for them anyway. So she displays some of them, but a lot of them. Packed away. Packed yeah. away. Well, she can rotate them. That's true. Take some out and put new ones up. Mm-hmm. Okay. So four cats. Uh, not on purpose. Not on purpose. No, they're all they're all rescues. Okay. Two I got from the shelter, and two were they just showed up. I always think that's good luck when you have pets. 
take up with you. Well, I must like it here. That last one, uh, I wasn't going to have, an, have her in the house, you know. I just, I'll feed you outside. Well, she got in and she won't leave. Mm hmm. I open the door. Want to go out? Nope. I'm staying right here. <laughs> yeah. They find you. Yeah. My sister, she um, used to foster dogs for a rescue group out of Charlotte. Uh -huh. And she had three of her own dogs and she ended up with five because there were some dogs she said that just nobody would ever adopt. She just knew it. So if she didn't adopt them, nobody was going to. Uh -huh. And there were a couple of them I agreed with. <laughs> they were sweet dogs, but they were, you know, they had their issues. Yeah, no one wants an old dog and no one wants a special needs dog. So bless her heart for taking them in. Mm -hmm. She's now down to just three. Um, one got older and passed away. Uh -huh. And then one actually, she was kind of an escape artist. That was one of her issues. And she escaped and got hit by a car. Oh. Mm-hmm. So now she has three, which one of them, go ahead. And I said, you can't tell a dog, you know, you're going to get hurt if you go out. They... Yeah. Yeah, it was sad. Um, she, um, that was one of the, the ones that she said that nobody would have adopted. Her name was Charlotte. And she really, she could jump vertical. Oh. <laughs> she, could, she could get on any surface. She was not fully potty trained. She, um, like, because she could jump vertical like that, could escape from any fencing. Mm -hmm. She was very intelligent and sweet as can be, but just had her issues. Yeah. So it's getting kind of close. So I'm going to go ahead and start pulling up the live. Okay because it takes just a second to do it. Now I'm familiar with that. <laughs> we do the church on Facebook Live and I never quite get the thing to start when Gus starts the organ, so. Gotcha. Says we're live. So All we're right. I want to double check and make sure that we are, yes, I need to change it to public so that everybody can see it. Okay, so now we are live and everybody can see us. So welcome everybody. <laughs> I hope we have some people out there watching. And we have Sandra Bruni here with us today. She is a local author here in Wadesboro. And um, I just finished reading your latest book, um, Beth Ann. Oh, okay. And I, I have to admit, it's my first one. And after I read it, I realized I probably should have read more than first. But mm -hmm. that'll be next. I realized that the, the characters um, continue on, which is kind of a neat thing. But um, the reason I wanted to ask you with us today um, is because you have um, written so many books um, and May the, I believe it was May the 1st was actually Make a Book Day. And I immediately thought of you when I saw that. I thought, oh, well, now's the time to have Sandra on because she has written so many books. And when we had Kay with us about her book of poetry, she mentioned that yes. you have been so influential with her in writing her book and you helped her a lot. And so I thought you would be a great person to have to talk about writing. Well, helping Kay so, is nag, 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 telling her to do it because she was so happy. <laughs> so she finally did and was so happy. Well, it was a beautiful book of poetry. Beautiful book, it is. And I love poetry, but I think anybody would love it. Even if they're new to poetry, I think they would enjoy mm -hmm. it. Oh, yeah. Um, but I would love to hear 
about your writing history. How many books have you written? I think it's 12 so far. Oh, which wow. Which is not a lot. It's not a lot in a 20 year span. It takes me a long time to get a book out. Yeah, well, I didn't realize I have, um, of course I, I've held up Morven and Bethann. I think those are your two most recent, is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I also have here, um, when he said goodbye, and I have the lunch club and angels unaware, but I didn't realize 12, that's a lot. At least mm -hmm. I feel like it's a lot. You said it's not that many, but. Oh no, look, look at Nora Roberts or Danielle Steele and see <laughs> how many they've written. <laughs> well, how did you like, what sparked your interest or desire to write? Oh, I always wanted to, but I never felt I had anything to write about, so. Um, back, well, 20 years ago, I had breast cancer and I kept a journal. And after I um, got through treatment and everything, I looked over the journal and I thought, well, this might help other people, you know, understand what's gonna happen and all this. So I wrote, um, it's called, I'd rather go to California, which is a nonfiction. It's a whole kind of the journey. Hmm. And everyone says, how did you get that title? So do you want me to tell you? I'd love to. Okay. I was at the surgeon's office and he had his calculator out. He was figuring out how many miles I would be driving to and from. I went to Albemarle for radiation. So you're going to be driving back and forth for six weeks. And he looked at his calculator and he said, well, you could drive to California. And I said, I'd rather go to California. <laughs> Wouldn't you? <laughs> so that's how that came about. And then after I, uh, that was published, I thought, well, what if someone had cancer and they didn't have a supportive husband and they didn't have a supportive group of friends and they're kind of facing it by themselves, how would that story look? So that's when I wrote um, Angels Unaware, where Kat's husband can't accept that she has cancer, he can't stand to look at her, and she has mm -hmm. to fight for herself and make a new circle of friends. So that's what came from that. And then it just kind of got into the, I don't know, Got the bug, I guess, so I kept on yeah. writing. Interesting. So your first book was a nonfiction book. Right. Very interesting. I'd love to, I'd love to read that. Um, so what around what year was that that you wrote the first book? Yes. Uh, gosh, I think the first I think it was around uh, 2010. So it took me a while to get get going yeah did you have people that you said that you kind of spurred k on did you have people that were spurring you on to kind of tell the story oh yeah well the writers club is a great uh, motivator because they're always saying what are you going to when you're going to do this when you're going to have something to show us so they, they keep you going i did belong for a while to the romance writers of america and they had a chapter that met in Charlotte, and I drove up to Charlotte once a month. And that, I don't know what happened. I guess I just got tired of the drive, and I decided I wasn't a romance writer. So, but then I've, I've got a lot of online friends that are writers, so we correspond. So we keep each other motivated. So did you, before you wrote the, the novels, or the nonfiction book before that, were you writing short stories or, cause it sounds yeah, like possibly this is something that the light just went out. Uh, this was something that you've been interested in for a while. Well, I worked in the newspaper for 10 years. Okay. So I had a column, a weekly column. I wrote editorials and of course, um, oh, news stories, of course. So that kind of sharpened my writing skills those 10 years cause I had a good editor that was always on me about punctuation and grammar and all that. So I learned a lot from him, uh, Albert Marshall. He was the editor of the Manson Record at the time. And we actually co-authored a book together called Plots. And I think the library has a copy We do, of that. we do have that one. Mm -hmm. And that was an experience. <laughs> I, I think it's a great book. It's got a really good story. Uh, the only book I've ever written or read, I think that the hero is totally unlikable. Oh, <laughs> he is a mess, <laughs> but you cheer him on because, you know, 
it's just something about him that he's, he's doing all these things wrong and you think oh you can't be doing that but still you have this feeling that hmm, go for it yeah it was it was good i wrote the female characters and he wrote the male characters and we kind of mesh them together mm -hmm. hmm. um you know when i was in school and we had to write um for essays and things like that they always had a specific way they wanted us to write you know, everything mm -hmm. was very regimented um you had to have your introductory paragraph and your you know three paragraphs after that and your closing paragraph and they told us specifically what to put here and there and um i wondered when you're writing a novel do you have a specific kind of a writing process that you go through or a kind of a recipe so to speak that you kind of to help you along the way or well there are uh, formats that you probably should follow uh, the hero's journey uh, having your uh, climax at a certain point then your dark moments and all that and I try to follow that but somehow my head goes the other way sometimes mm -hmm. but that's a good one or like a, a cozy mystery and I thought well I might like to try writing that but that's very rigid too because a cozy mystery has to have a specific background it should be someplace charming like a bake shop or the seashore you should never have the person that's killed be likable they have to be someone everybody hates and i didn't know there were all those rules for that so every every genre has its own format its own rules that you should follow mm -hmm. but not everybody i mean you do what you have to do i mean if you just follow a specific rigid rule you're not letting your creativity flow so you kind of keep that as a blueprint Mm -hmm. for your your book your journey but you still need to follow your own path too if that makes any sense yeah it does did you take a writing class at any point to help you along with those um to learn about all of that or way back in college i took creative writing but that was a long long time ago but um yeah uh the groups i belong to have uh, workshops we went to a lot of workshops where you would write and then have it be critiqued after. And those are very informative. Workshops are always good. The Writers mm -hmm. Club has one every fall uh, of the different aspect of writing. And it's an all day thing. And it's a very good exercise. Cool. Um, has your writing process changed over time? Like since you wrote the you know, your first book to, to now are there certain things that you you know because you've done it more you're it's easier or or i mean how has it changed over the years i think when i first started i just would sit down and start without any complete idea of where i was going i had a general thought in mind but but uh now i have i have it more plotted out and my head before I start. I don't have the storyboard and all the notes and sticky notes and things that some people do, but I do have a plan where it should begin and where it should end. So I'm not quite as, you know, got a little more structure. Okay. Is it, do you find it's easier now that you have the structure or do you, um, you know, when you sat down and wrote, did you then have to go back and change a lot? And um, re yeah, because re sometimes you worry. You're, yeah, you're you're going along, and then you think, oh wait a minute, if if he does this, then what I wrote back here can't be right. It, you know, it won't fit in. So you have to go back and change that so that what you write here is going to make sense. So in that sense, you're always going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Ryan. So everything makes sense at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, you've written both historical fiction and contemporary. And I wondered if you had a preference. Do you like historical better than um, the, you well, know? Well, I, I love historical, but it's a lot of research. So I do a lot, a lot of research for that. Uh, contemporary is easier because things are happening as they're happening. So you don't need to go back and check dates and everything. Well, you do a little bit, 
But I also wrote a series of fantasy stories, which are not in print. They're all ebooks. Oh. And this is with a publisher called Good Re uh, Clean Reads, cleanreads.com. Mm -hmm. And it's a series of three. And it's um, time travel. Well, I just thought one time, I just would like to, I was reading some fantasy. And I thought, I'd like to try this genre. So I just started writing with no idea of ever publishing it. And I thought, well, I'll just do what I want to do. So I had time travel and I had shape shifting and I had uh, telekinesis, all kinds of stuff. Just whatever I felt like throwing in there, I threw it in there. And I submitted another story to the publisher and she didn't like it. She said, show me something else you've got. And I thought, oh, what the heck? So I sent that one in. And a couple of days later, the contract was in the mail. So I wrote two more of the same two characters. Mm -hmm. And that was lots of fun. I just love that. Because you just let your imagination go. Yeah. Uh huh. Do you write mostly the same genres that you enjoy reading yourself? or? Well, I guess so. I, I want to call it a genre slut. I'm sorry for the word. But uh, I don't stick to one thing. Like someone might write all mysteries or someone might write all historical. I like to try different things. So... I don't know what I prefer, but I like to read <laughs> different things. So I, I, I like to read maybe a biography and maybe historical and maybe a cozy mystery and, you know, everything I like. So why not write? Mm -hmm. If you write what you like, then I like everything. So I guess that's why I'm all over the map. What are you reading right now? I'm reading West with Giraffes. Okay. Neat. Yeah, <laughs> it's a sort of a fictionalized account of a true story of a, during the depression they had sent two giraffes to go to the zoo in California and they had to take them there by truck so it's a story of the, getting these giraffes from New York across the country into California and everything that they encounter along the okay. way it's very interesting it's my book club selection for May so well, neat. Maybe everybody will check it out out there. I don't. I don't know that we have it here at the library, but I'll have to check and see. Okay. If we if we do, I'll put it in the comments after this is um, after we're done. Um. I, so I read um, Beth Ann, as I said, um, mm -hmm. and. It's historical fiction, as I'm sure people can tell from the cover um, art. And it's, the cover art is gorgeous. I wanted, wondered if you wanted to tell us who did the photography and... Oh, I can't think of your name. I think I gave credit in one of the books. Uh, I got that from, uh, I think it was Com Flickr Commons or something. Okay. I'm sure it's probably, I probably saw it. I might not have done it in that book. I should but, um, but you I, can go online and there's all kind of different uh, places where you can buy pictures. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got that for $15. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or, yeah. That's neat. Did a lot of looking. I knew kind of what I had in mind. So I was going through lots and lots and lots of pictures, you know, just, oh, finally, there, there it is. That's the one I want. Mm hmm. So it takes place in Anson County in Sneedsboro. Right. And um, I thought that was pretty neat. And I wondered the characters, were any of the characters based on actual Anson County um, residents from that time period? Or did you, were they all in, made up in your imagination? Uh, some of them were the names, like the sheriff. It was actually, the sheriff at that time was named that. I, Mary Medley. Sheriff High Tower, which I thought was kind of cool because I'm a <laughs> High Tower. He was High Sheriff at that time. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you, um, it's, it's not in that book, but in more um, Riverbend. Okay. A lot of, Mrs. Dunbar, she was based after Granny Dunn, who was an actual Anson County midwife. But I didn't use her real name because there's still family here and they might not want, but uh, she's based on that. Mm -hmm. So they, a lot of them were based on historical 
people. So I think you mentioned this earlier, but I'm assuming you had to do a lot of research for the historical fiction. Um, do you want to touch on that a little bit? Oh, or? Sure. Um, I don't know if you remember, but some time ago, the Writers Club put on an outdoor drama in Colton at mm -hmm. the college. And we did an enormous amount of research for that. Um, we went to Chapel Hill. We went to, oh, I was in the library down here when you had all your archives down in the basement and it was mm -hmm. musty. And <laughs> I would go down there. I'd spend hours down there looking through all the different things that you have, a lot of interesting stuff so that we could put the play on and have it be as historically accurate as possible. And after mm -hmm. the play ended, I thought, we have done all this research and I've got all these notes and all these facts. I should use them for something. So that's a lot of the research had already been done for the play. So I just okay. had to look at specific things for accuracy. Gotcha. Well, that's very, I mean, um, which I mean, I, I like historical fiction anyways. So it was down my alley. But it's really neat to kind of hear about places that you know. Um, obviously, it's a whole different time period. But and again, you know, hearing Sheriff Hightower was kind of nice. And now I kind of it kind of made me want to go research about Sheriff Hightower if he was. I was I, so she said that he was one of the characters that was real. Mm -hmm. Kind of made me want to go find out more about him. So Good. I thought that was interesting. Um, is this going to be, um, since you've got, I'm assuming you can tell me if I'm wrong, but since there was a character in here called Morven as well, um, she's the main character's sister. Um, I'm assuming this is about probably how she and her husband meet perhaps. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, what, I wonder, will there be another book in the series or is this the conclusion of the series? I, I don't know if something comes to me. Okay. Maybe. Right now, I have no plans for a sequel, but you never know what's going to happen. So, How do you um, do your character development? Um, if, I feel like you, you, you create very rich characters. Um, how do you go about um, doing that? That's a good question. I, I really feel as if the characters are people I know. I mean, I think about them a lot. A lot of my writing goes on up here. And I constantly think about the, the characters and what they might do or say, or and they become real to me. And I actually, one time I was in a grocery store and I saw someone in the aisle ahead and I thought, oh, there's, oh no, wait a minute. No, that's a fictional character. That guy's not a real person. <laughs> it's not my fictional character, it's a real person. But they, they become real. So I guess I just, um, I, can't, I can't answer that. It's just something in my imagination that just comes out. Mm -hmm. Are you constantly writing in your head? Are you constantly thinking, oh, that would be a good story? Or, or maybe I should, you know, do you jot, are you constantly jotting down your ideas and going back to them later to write or? Mm, they, they stay up here pretty much. But yeah, if I a story starts out, it's just a little niggling, and I think I don't want to write another book. Go away. <laughs> it's coming back, me. I don't want to write another book. I've got other things to do, and it'll come stronger. And finally, I just all right, all right. You're there in my head. I've got to sit down and write and get it. It's the only way to get it out of your head is to sit down and write it. So that's what I have to do. And I think there, I've written that story. I'm done. And then another idea comes. Mm -hmm. So I never know what, what it's going to be, whether it's going to be contemporary. I mean, I wrote all the fantasy ones, then I went back and wrote which, when he said goodbye, which is contemporary. And then I wrote the historical. And I wish I could say I had a set pattern and stick to it, and but I don't. So that's not good advice. Um, for <laughs> Well, that was going to be my next question is um, if somebody wants to write, how would you suggest, what should they do to get started? Well, depending if they like to write by hand or by the computer, I actually, 
I didn't really start writing until the internet and computer came along because it's so much easier to type your story and then you can strike out something and cut and paste, which when you're writing by hand is tedious. And I think a lot of people just gave up because this is too hard. But with a computer, it just opened up so many avenues. I mean, you can immediately look up the spelling of a word, or if you have a doubt about a date, you can go to Google and find it, and it's all right at your fingertips. So if you're going to start writing, my advice is to sit down and start. And don't worry what it's going to take you. Don't worry about uh, grammar and all this. Just write the darn thing. And then you can go back and fix, you know, refine it the way you get it to the shape you want it to be in. But if, you, if you're thinking at the beginning, it's got to be perfect. I have to write this perfect beginning. I have to write this perfect sentence. I have to write this perfect character. You're not going to get anywhere. You're putting up barriers. You just need to start and let it flow. Mm -hmm. I've always heard too, um, uh, you know, from just people in general, you always hear, oh, you should write what you know. Do you think that's a good tip? Is that something? Because I've realized like, you know, these books, even the historical fiction take place in Anson County. And then I kind of browse through some of the contemporary and they take place in small towns, maybe not Wadesboro, but similar in some ways. Um, do you think that writing about at least specific locations that you kind of know, is that helpful or? Well, if you really want to know a location, there's always Google Earth. And you can look. If you want to set something in Paris, you can go and look at a street scene. I mean, it's, it's like I said, the internet's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But write what you know. If we just wrote what we know, we wouldn't write very much. But I think it's right within your heart. Mm -hmm. I think that would be better advice. Write what, write what you want to tell people. What's the story you want to tell people? I like that. With me, I, I, like, I like to take stories about women that have some kind of difficulty, a missing husband, um, a secret, a terrible secret, like in Morven. Just something that they have to overcome and show how they can find the strength in themselves to overcome it. And that's, that's uh, I guess that's what I know that I wanna write about. Maybe that's what they mean. What's the thing that you know inside yourself that you wanna share, that you wanna tell? Okay. Um, is there anything that you would like to add about anything we haven't covered or any tips you think people should know about or well if anybody out there is interested in writing by all means come to our writers club meetings um, meet sunday afternoons the fourth sunday of the month at three o'clock and we've been doing it by zoom but i think we're going to start back in person and we usually meet at presbyterian church fellowship hall so we have a website and you can check out the website and find out when we're meeting uh, we usually have workshops or open mic, share what we've been working on. Uh, it's good to be around other writers. I think that's uh, way back. I went to a week long writers conference at Duke University. Reynolds Price was one of the instructors, if you remember him. And it was a revelation. I mean, I'd been kind of writing. I'd entered a couple contests, you know, and, I got there and we were just sitting around talking and I just said, I have found my people. I found my tribe. This is the people I need to be with. And it was the most wonderful week. I mean, just listening to all these writers give their experiences and just talking to people, beginning writers, established writers. And I came home just on cloud nine. It was wonderful. So, um, that's when I kind of put out a little feeler if anybody else felt the same way to get together. And that's how the Writers Club got started. Okay, Wouldn't so you, are you one of the founding members? Yeah. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. Because well, I, 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 I found this group of people and I thought, I want to recreate that in Anson County. Why do I have to go to Chapel Hill or you know Durham to find them? And by golly, there are people in Anson County that are writers. And you've talked to Kay and Leon. 
Yes. So, yeah. Yes. I am. I'm amazed at the talent. You, I mean, you always um, kind of take for granted sometimes the people closest to you. And I think sometimes people take advantage, even local authors. Um, you know, they're people are used to, you know, reading people that are famous or so well known or the books that are on the bestsellers list. Mm -hmm. But I've definitely enjoyed getting to read local authors. So I'm very impressed with all the talent that we have here in Anson County. Not just writing, but musical and uh, we look like our theater. Mm -hmm. uh, wonderful things going on. You're right. We have a wonderful theater. So um, what I will do is I'll make sure to get the website and I will put it in the comments um, and I'll reshare our live that we're doing right now. And that way they can find the website for the Writers Club. Okay, it's and, the Anson County Writers Club org. Okay. Yeah. And I'm thinking, hopefully I've, I've spoken to Kay. I'm, I'm hoping that we'll be able to have the Writers Club winners from your last contest at <laughs> the, um, for summer reading program. So hopefully we'll have, we we'll working more with the Writers Club. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, well, I'm so thankful for you um, for you um, coming and talking to us and telling us about your writing. And I'm looking forward to um, reading Morven and the other ones as well, your other books. And I'd love to read the nonfiction books too. So maybe we can get a copy of that here at the library if we don't already. I didn't notice it, but that doesn't mean we don't have it. I, you did it one time. It may have disappeared. Who knows? Gotcha. But I can get you a copy if you want. Okay. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Well, we'd like to thank everybody for watching. And if you have a question for us, um, feel free to put it in the comments. And I'm sure um, you're on Facebook as well, aren't you? So mm -hmm. you can answer any questions if anybody has it about your books or writing in general. And I'll also add the website for the Writers Club. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very thank much you. for having me.